too much power to vote on stuff. Quite frankly, I don't think you really know a lot about as much as we know about it. So yeah, we play against these guys every single night. We battle against these guys. We know what they say on the court. We know how they handle their teammates. We know how they approach the game and our vote should count. Our opinions should count. Like I said, I don't think you guys know as much as we do. And I don't see why you have more power than we do. Wow. Durant uh, on a bit of a rant. He also added that the media doesn't know expletive when a reporter asked about his coach's job security. Skip, um, I don't know if you know this, but he often takes on bloggers and reporters on Twitter. Now he's moved it to a bigger stage. What do you make of what he said this weekend? Stephen, as you remember, for years on this show, I often said that Kevin Durant was my favorite NBA player playing for my hometown team in Oklahoma City. And I must admit today that Kevin Durant, for me, is getting more and more difficult to love as a basketball player and an NBA personality. So, Stephen A., here we go again with the split personality that is Kevin Durant, the identity crisis that is Kevin, the contradiction that is Kevin Durant. It just seems like year after year, Kevin struggles to find who he is or who he isn't or what he should be or what he shouldn't be. We have nice Kevin, then not nice Kevin. We have kind Kevin, then not kind Kevin. Friday, he attacked the credibility, if I'm going to get this straight in my head, the credibility of the media voters who just last year voted Kevin Durant the MVP of this league. That just, that's hard for me to compute. And it reminded me, as you'll remember, Stephen A., of something that happened to me personally with Kevin, what was it, three years ago, when I'd often said on this show that I criticized Russell Westbrook for taking too many shots that my guy, Kevin Durant, should be taking. And then Kevin blasted me for blasting his teammate, Russell. And I, I guess I get, well, he's defending his teammate, but it's at the expense of the guy who said for years, favorite player, and all the way back to his, his freshman year at Texas, I, I predicted that he would win multiple NBA scoring titles. So it felt to me like he's biting one hand that feeds him. And then last year, we had him switching all the way over from the not nice Kevin Durant shoe commercial to creating the website that is strongandkind.com because he, he wanted to change the perception that, that nice guys finish last, that he said nice guys can finish first. So now, to sum this up, we have a guy who has tattooed on his body two Bible verses, and yet last year, Kevin Durant led the NBA with 20 technical fouls. It's, it's like a contradiction. I'm a little lost here because... Frankly, Stephen, I, I just think, I think Kevin Durant's a little lost. Well, since you've acknowledged that you're a little bit lost, allow me to try and enlighten you. Number one, um, I don't really have too much of a problem with Kevin Durant taking the position that he took on its surface, but you'd be surprised as to why I feel that way. First of all, you have to consider the fact that, once again, just like when he came after you because you basically attacked Russell Westbrook in his in his eyes, uh, the same could be said for the media who's brought into question the resume of a Scott Brooks. Now, all of us have speculated whether or not Scott Brooks is going to last long at Oklahoma City. But if I'm Kevin Durant, I certainly don't have a problem with Scott Brooks. This is a man that over the last four years has taken him to three conference finals appearances, one NBA Finals appearance, and the other time they didn't make it, they, they went to the Western Conference semifinals. So you look at that combined with a resume that religiously records over 50 win seasons, 50 plus win seasons, with the exception of the um, lockout shortened season for 66 games in which he won 47 of those games. Uh, from a record perspective, there is no reason on earth to bring in the question, the credibility of a Scott Brooks. Nevertheless, it is something that happens religiously. And Kevin Durant, the reigning league MVP, who starred in Scott Brooks' first season as the head coach, first full season as a head coach, Kevin Durant averaged 30 for this man on 20 shots a game. And so when you look at it from that perspective, he's absolutely right to come to the defense of his coach. That's point number one. Point number two, 
He's a guy that is class personified. You can say what you want about Kevin Durant with the 20 technical fouls and all of that stuff, but I go, uh, I go considerably deeper than that. I think about a guy who's universally recognized as one of the top three players in all of the NBA, who conducts himself like a model citizen, who's a fabulous ambassador for the game of basketball. Um, he goes about, he loves the game of basketball, wants to play all the time, tries to do things the right way. Uh, you don't hear about any nonsense concerning him off the court, not once. This guy's reputation is absolutely positively impeccable as a human being. So all of those things being considered, him being 26 years of age, being as flawless and impeccable as he is as a person when it comes to an off-the-court behavior, coming to the defense of his teammate, Russell Westbrook, his coach now, Scott Brooks, I think it's something to be commended for. Now, in a ma from a macro perspective, I will say this. Do I think it was totally wise? No, I don't, because I think that Kevin Durant is inviting unnecessary heat down upon himself. But the number one reason I like it, Skip, despite everything that I just brought down, that, that, that I just broke down, the number one reason I like it is because Kevin Durant gave us some insight into how most, if not all of these dudes, and in, in not just in the NBA, but professional sports feels about the media. I, I, I like that. I like that. You know, my attitude is if we're at war, say we at war. If, you know, call a spade a spade. Let's get it on. It's not a problem. I love the fact that that he was honest enough to say what he said, because if he is willing to speak out and say what he said, could you imagine what these other dudes feel despite smiling in folks face, despite uh, engaging in PC and just saying the right things? No. Kevin Durant saying, look, this is how I feel. And I guarantee you, most of the guys that's in this league feel exactly the way that I do because they do feel victimized. They do feel a lot of these things. And most of the time, it's grotesquely unfounded. They got a lot of damn nerves feeling that way. But you'd never know if they listen to spin doctors and what have you, always telling them to just say the right things to get through the moment. Kevin Durant is saying, I'm a grown man. I'm 26 years of age. You know my character. You know what I stand for. But I'm entitled to feel what I feel. And I'm going to be honest enough to say it. I thank him for that. I appreciate it. He's always treated me with, with, with the utmost respect, and I appreciate that. But even if he did it, the fact that he was honest enough to say what he says makes me feel good because I can't stand two-faced punks, and he is not that. He is honest and straightforward, and I give him credit for that because there's a whole bunch of dudes in professional sports that will smile in your face and talk behind your back like the wusses they are. He is not that dude. I give him credit for that. Okay. You give him credit for that, but how in, in the previous breath could you call him an NBA ambassador? That wasn't an ambassador thing to say, both on Friday or Saturday, attacking the media both days. Am ambassadors are not, are not always flawless. Uh, there are imperfections in every human being. This was not a perfect moment by Kevin Durant. I will openly admit that. But if you asked me, not just as a player, as a person, I'm talking all time. You can pick any era that you want. You can pick any sport that you want. You give me the top five overall individuals on the court, off the court. Greatness on the court or field of play. Greatness off the court or field of play. I'm picking Kevin Durant as a top five. This dude does not get into trouble. He wow. doesn't act silly. He doesn't engage in, in, in childishness or whatever. He feels the way he feels. It comes from a genuine place, Skip. He's coming to the defense of his coach. We might not agree with how he handled it this past Saturday, but by and large, his resume is pretty impeccable. I take him any day of the week. He can start for my franchise. Okay, I get that, but let's separate person from player. S Stephen A., when I talk to guys I, I know, Same GMs, up. personnel people, coaches around the league, it, 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 everybody's talking now about, well, will Scott Brooks survive if they don't get to the NBA Finals this year? Do you hear that from people? I think it's a legitimate question to ask Kevin. He doesn't have to kill the messenger who asked that question. But he believes it's illegitimate. He doesn't believe any legitimacy should be to it. 
And when a reporter asked him the question, maybe Kevin Durant would have said, them GMs, those executives, those coaches don't know what the hell they're talking about, too. If the reporter had, had specified, look, around the league, this is what they're saying about your coach. I took it more as him coming to the defense of Scott Brooks than him lambasting the media again. It wasn't wise for him to do. I think that now he's put himself under a microscope, and if he slips up, he's going to see a different side because a legitimate argument can be made that nobody has been treated, very few people rather, have been treated better than Kevin Durant by the media. The media has clearly been incredibly kind yeah. to Kevin Durant. So him of all people saying that, I get it. But I'm saying what was the impetus for it? The impetus for it was him coming to the defense of a coach in five full seasons as a head coach after going out in the first round in 2009, 2010, they've been to a conference finals, the finals, the semifinals, back to the conference finals. That's that, that's okay, three conference fine. finals. Okay. All right. Last quick point. You and I have disagreed on this before, but it bothers me a little that even last week or it was, maybe six, eight days ago, Kevin Durant was caught in a clip that went viral on YouTube, screaming an expletive after he hit a shot. I'm a bad you-know-what. And again, you can say, oh, that happens all the time. But trust me, LeBron wouldn't yell that. Le uh, Tim Duncan wouldn't yell it. Chris Paul wouldn't yell it. Steph Curry wouldn't yell it. And yet you're putting Kevin Durant on a pedestal here that I don't think he quite belongs on. All right, Kevin Durant, thoughts My again. My mic is messed up. He, I'll get back to you. We'll get back to this in just a moment. We'll take a break. But before we go to break, guys, let me show you this. Do you remember back in the day when we had this campaign going on? Get LeBron to dunk. LeBron shares his thoughts on the dunk contest when we return, and perhaps we'll pick it up where we left off. Stephen A., we're trying to get to you and your mic. First take back in just a few moments.